Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Partha. I'm a consultant diabetes. I work in Portsmouth and one of my roles is also as the National Specialty Advisor for Diabetes with NHS England. Um, well, that's impressive. Uh, my, my name is James uh, Norton and I am a, a, a type 1 diabetic, um, but I also um, get dressed up and play other people and prance around on stages and film sets occasionally. When I was diagnosed with diabetes, I was 22 and I felt pretty invisible, partly because of my age and partly because I hadn't at that point had any health hiccups. And then I was suddenly con confronted with this condition, which was chronic. And my mum was diagnosed when she was in her mid to late 50s. And my sister was diagnosed when she was nine. So um, we've had kind of every, in, our, in my family, we've had every kind of experience um, covered. Um, I was a young adult and it was um, a shock, obviously, a huge, huge shock. Um, I think because I had my sister at that point who was type one, it was a massive help. And I had someone immediately in my life and my family to sort of lean on and ask advice. And she was incredibly reassuring. Um, and I'd seen her navigate her teens and her, you know, she was 20 at the time. And she was an incredible inspiration for me because she was someone who never let it control her life. She then trained as a doctor and is now um, a GP living in um, Yorkshire with her two um, boys, uh, two little babies. So, you know, if anyone is a sort of poster, uh, an example to diabetics of how to live a very normal, happy life and not let it hamper you, my sister is that. So I was very lucky to have her in my life. But look, it was a shock, um, and it's been it's been an interesting ride, ups and downs, highs and lows in every sense. Um, but it's getting easier and easier. And, you know, part of that is the tech, is the medicine, is the fact that we have access to incredible um, insulin. And the CGM, which you obviously know a lot about, has been a massive game changer. And a lot of diabetes is just spending time trying to keep your levels in control, trying to keep your glucose levels um, as much in range as possible. And obviously, CGM has allowed... Um, allowed for that and and, and, as, and so you know in, in so many ways it helps less anxiety better sleep um less hypos which means less recovery which means you can eat a more normal diet and um you spend simply less time thinking and worrying about it so um i know that i always say this and i'm you know don't want to be sycophantic because i know you get a lot of love from a lot of people but the CGM is the game changer in, in my life and many, many people's lives has been changed as a result. So thanks, Partha, again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think, so to me, I think I've always thought about it this way. When I look at people who live with type 1 diabetes, right, I think if you look at the traditional ways, you know, glucose, you know, how you prick your fingers and do it. The simplest example I always give is like, if you pick a like a footballer or a sports person who you've never heard of, right, and they just show you four pictures of him or her, you would have no idea how good they are at it. It's when mm -hmm. you see a little video, then you get to know, oh, OK, that's how good they are. And this is probably the best example of that, because that's what you get with the CGM. I mean, with blood glucose strip, you know, the traditional way of doing it, you know, just got spot checks in a day. This one gives you such a nice narrative. And as you said, it's just a game changer because it just makes your life better. It's just self-management oh. and everything else. That's the big thing. And I think that ties in nicely to the roles that individuals like yourselves have to showcase that you can be successful in your life and your career and you're doing where you are. And you obviously well rec recognized, respected for all the work you do in your field. So it's great to see that sort of side of things. So do, do you see yourself uh, as a role model that you have to champion what you're doing how do you see yourself because i think having the human side of it is incredibly important to see show everybody but is there any messages that you would leave for everybody listening in um um you know I, there's, there's lots of kind of pithy mantras and you know my, my, the, the, the consultant which i first met called Professor Betteridge, I think, years ago at UCH. Remember him? He, he, may, he may have retired by now, I'm not sure, this is 15 years ago, but he was, he very, you know, he said, and it's it's the one everyone here is beginning, don't, con, you know, you, you control the diabetes, it doesn't control you. That was one of the very important messages I remember, and I've stuck by that. And I've almost made a point of, you know, the career I, I have and, and the very sort of unpredictable lifestyle I lead, you know, it's, there isn't, it's lovely, and I'm very grateful for it, but I travel a lot and, I have to be awake at weird times and I have to wake up at four and eat at weird times and miss meals. And 
and it is complicated and it does sometimes mean that my sugars veer off um but i'm doing what i love and if it means that my sugars are occasionally out of range in order to have the life i have then i'm happy to you know balance that risk and do the best i can when i'm at home and my life's a bit steadier so i think to listeners as well i think it's important to say that there used to be times when you used to fit different sorts of criteria before you can Mm -hmm. get access to these non-invasive glucose monitors whether it's a flash glucose or a or a cgm and i think it's uh, important to say that at the moment you just need one criteria which is to have type 1 diabetes also this man for all those type ones who are watching this if ever you're worried about your diabetes and you're having you know the kind of the inevitable anxieties which come with being type one and often it's one article you've read late at night when you're having one of those kind of wormhole moments and you're sort of going into the deep dive i had one coffee with partha recently and honestly that coffee did so did more help to me than any article any deep dive any you know you, you just you just calmed me down and gave me an antidote to all those dark catastrophizing moments. Well, you should explain it because it's incredibly reassuring. But what I always say is that you know, the narrative, as you rightly said, you know, and you see that in clinic, you ask somebody who you never met and you go, like, what do you think your blood sugar should be? And you can see the hesitancy as to what they're supposed to say. And I said, no, don't worry about it. What, what should it be? And they say, oh, between four and seven. And it's OK. How often should it be there? And they go, all the time. It's practically impossible to be between four and seven for people who don't even have type one diabetes all the time. So I think the message needs to be, listen, we'd like you to be between four and 10. Ideally, 70 percent or higher would be fantastic, but it's not easy to do. So let's aim for 50. Then when you get there, you're comfortable. Then you get to 60 and we work our way to get to you to 70. And that's where the complication. So I think it's important to have that message that, hey, listen, it's OK. It's OK <laughs> that you don't have to beat yourself up. And I think that's what the continuous glucose monitors and things do you they give you that range and they tell you that okay you are improving and those little bits you can tackle and as you said then newer insulin's out the newer technology out so you can work on it everyone knows what a diabetic who's doing better than them and and even if you don't know any other diabetics you still have this this very stark qualitative system which is number based and you know you're doing a little better this time but you're doing a little worse this time and it does lead lend itself to self-criticism and self-doubt and actually what you have instilled in me is stop comparing yourself to the people which is a great lesson in life beyond just diabetes um stop comparing yourself to the kind of ridiculous spurious targets which you're kind of conditioned with very early on when i heard you say that a lot of the unfortunate but inevitable qualitative kind of hierarchical thinking you know the kind of need to be top of the class in order to have a long healthy life need to make sure i hit certain targets unless or or else i'm going to have horrible complications stop thinking in that way think about the moment this day stop punishing yourself for the times you're there out of range give yourself a pat on the back for the time that you're in range we're all working together with individuals like you to try and sort of raise the profile and make you know life as easy as possible it's not easy to live with type 1 diabetes and I always say, yes, you can have a completely normal life. You can become, a, as well as the other end of the scale, you can become the prime minister of a country. You can. You can be a Champions League winning footballer. You can be a cricket World Cup winning cricketer. Uh, you can play rugby for your national team. You can be, who knows, the next Bond. So many things can happen. But I think beyond that, every day I see patients and people living with type 1 diabetes who have had diabetes for 50 years, 60 years, doing well, you know, mm. life has changed, as you said. So I think hopefully that gives hope to people. I think I said this in this recent post, it's, you know, at, at its best, it's a faff. At its worst, when it's badly controlled, it can be a real problem and it can, you know, be threatening on a daily basis. But with the help which you and others have provided, which CGM provides daily, with the community which we have around us, which is incredible like with all of those things helping us along it's proven and it will you know we can have very full rich long happy healthy lives and um and we have this great community around us to to live to live all that with so that's great